we do not conduct civic education. But we accredit bodies that conduct civic education. The commission also has a dispute resolution uh, mandate. And there are three committees that the commission has set up in order to uh, adjudicate over disputes. We have the Leadership and Integrity Vetting Committee that is enforced in respect to enforcement of Chapter 6 of the Constitution. We also have um, the Nomination Dispute Resolution Committee, and this is the committee that hears and determines complaints arising from registration of candidates. When our returning officers register candidates, and they will do that uh, from 29th of May to 9th of June this year, including the registration of presidential candidates. A complaint may arise, and that complaint is required to be filed before the IBC Dispute Resolution Committee. And the complaint, a complaint may arise in respect to the uh, action of the returning officer, that of declining, uh, for instance, to clear a certain person as a candidate. Maybe the person does not meet the uh, qualifications because there's a checklist that the returning officer usually has. If, for instance, the person is not a registered voter, then he is not eligible to be a candidate, and the returning officer will decline to clear him. Now, aggrieved by that decision, he moves to the APEX, uh, IBC Nomination Dispute Resolution Committee, that is chaired by the commission chairperson. That committee exercises uh, quasi-judicial uh, powers. Of course, the decision of that committee is subject to challenge by uh, an aggrieved person to the High Court under uh, judicial review uh, proceedings. The third committee is that of Electoral Code of Conduct Enforcement Committee that Chairman mentioned here. Uh, the committee enforces the provisions of uh, the Electoral Code of Conduct found in the second schedule of the Elections Act. And there's a constitutional anchor of, of that committee, uh, that is Article 88 j that mandates the commission to develop a code of conduct uh, for candidates and for political parties. Of course, that is again replicated uh, in Section 110 of the Elections Act. Now, this, this committee enforces the code. There is a shared mandate in the enforcement of the Electoral Code of Conduct. If you look at uh, the Election Offenses Act, you will find an offense uh, of breach of the Electoral Code of Conduct. You will find an offense in respect of a person who participates in an election, whereas as a candidate, whereas he has not subscribed to the Electoral Code of Conduct. So the ODPP has uh, statutory powers under the Election Offenses Act to prosecute such a person, just the same way the IEBC also has power to enforce the Electoral Code of Conduct. So that uh, is, is, is an area of shared responsibility and therefore necessary for a collaborative uh, arrangement between the two institutions to ensure that uh, no person suffers uh, double jeopardy. The other mandate of IBC is that of registration of candidates, which I have mentioned. If you followed keenly the debate around the political parties uh, amendments, sorry, the amendments to the Political Parties Act, you must have realized that there is now a distinction between the nomination process as conducted by political parties and or select their candidates for election is called nomination. It is no longer called party primary because that was the previous name, party primary. So party primaries does not exist in our statute books. The other mandate of uh, IBC is to regulate the process by which uh, political parties nominate their candidates. And we have developed uh, guidelines and regulations in respect of which the political parties are expected to comply with. 
failure to comply, the commission then disallows that political party to participate in the nominations. And, and one case is the two-thirds gender rule that uh, Moses and, and Conrad mentioned here, that the commission ensures that the list that comes from political parties uh, of candidates uh, meets the two-third uh, gender rule. And that is uh, in compliance with the Katiba Institute case that Moses mentioned here. It's an obligation that the commission has and which it promises to execute uh, religiously. The other mandate is that of uh, development of the code of conduct, which I have mentioned. And uh, the last mandate is that of ensuring that there is compliance with the legislation in respect of nominations by political parties uh, themselves. The presentation that we are said to have here is a presentation on the electoral circle. And depending on which school somebody went to, some may call it cycle, some will call it circle. Cynthia? But it means this round thing, eh? the electoral cycle. Uh, we will also focus on the polling day activities. What happens on the polling day? We have all the material here that you will interact with on the polling day. So we will demonstrate right from the time a voter, right from the time a polling station is declared open, to the time a voter, the first voter, walks into the polling station, what happens at every desk until that voter is inked and now leaves the polling station. All materials are here. Probably what is not here is the server. But, <laughs> but we, will, we will be able to explain what a server is. Uh, we have our IT guru in the room. Uh, he will uh, demonstrate to us that a server is not a tangible object, as many people perceive it to be. But we will not open it today. <laughs> With those uh, many remarks, uh, colleagues, allow me to now call upon uh, our master trainers to step forward. One is already here, uh, Beatrice uh, Ngunjiri. Please step forward. Our colleagues, you will not be disappointed by this team. This is a carefully chosen team. They are master trainers who have trained judges and magistrates and have excelled in that area. And the commission appreciates uh, them for that good work. So these master trainers, apart from being master trainers, are in charge of various constituencies. They are constituency election coordinators. The constituency election coordinators become returning officers based on an appointment by the commission. Then their assistants at the constituency level become the deputy returning officers. We also have uh, the level of uh, county returning officers at the county level and deputy county returning officers. So these are the people who conduct elections at the constituency and are responsible for uh, the delivery of a free, fair, and credible election. They supervise the polling station staff. And we had uh, the uh, submission of our uh, presenters in the morning that elections is conducted at the polling station. And once conducted at the polling station, the election is final. The results are final. And not even the returning officers can alter those results. And that, that is contained in, in law and in the judgments of both uh, the Court of Appeal in the minor Kiaya case and in the Supreme Court case petition number one of 20, presidential election petition number one of 2017. So as prosecutors, the main focus, I would advise, should be at the polling station where elections is conducted. The presiding officer, 
who fills the Form A series, 34A, for purposes of the presidential election. That is the man who has the key to the elections and to the election results. It is not the returning officer. It is not anybody at anniversary towers. And this, I want to give a, a certain example. It may not be popular. On the deep state, it is believed that the deep state can control elections, isn't it? Those who are smart, for instance, in the Kiamba constituency by election, ensured that they had agents in all polling stations because that is where elections is conducted. And you know what happened in Kiamba and the results. So that dispels the concept of deep state. It is not there. So if you want to win an election, have your agents in all polling stations. You will have results by 9 p.m. You only need to sit in your comfort room and wait to celebrate. Thank you very much, colleagues. I wish to invite uh, Mr. Ngunjiri. Uh, Mr. Ngunjiri, please come forth, forward, introduce yourself again, and please mention your electoral area of designation. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Director. Good afternoon. Gunjiri Mogo is my name. I currently work at Roisambu constituency, that is Nairobi County. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, all protocols observed, my name is Beatrice Muli. I work for IBC at Kibra constituency. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maurice Ligulu, and I work at Dagoreti South constituency, Nairobi County. Good afternoon. I'm Lina Kilonzi. I'm the constituency elections coordinator, Dika Town. Dika Town is composed of Dika East uh, sub-county and Dika West sub-county. And Dika Town constituency is in Dika in, in uh, Kiambu County. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Martin Yaga is my name. I'm a nice city officer. Nasi Abdi. Is in. <laughs> Uh, now that we have introduced ourselves, I will uh, ask that we, we don't relax in this training. I want us to be more agile than we are. So agility here is very important. Remember, it is in the afternoon we have taken lunch, isn't it? So we are likely to be carried away by some fatigue. And I, I don't want to call it sleeping. Because sometimes some, some of us close their eyes when they, maybe they are saying a prayer, I don't know. <laughs> so I'll ask that we, we, we move with speed, but we participate. This is adult learning. Tukiwaambia tupiga mikono tutapiga. So it is, you are no longer now those officers there, the prosecutors. Nasa tuko kwa class. And then after this we can debrief and go back to the, to the offices. Now, before we do the simulations, uh, it will be important that we go through the electoral cycle. Sometimes when we meet friends outside IEBC, they normally ask us, what do you do when we have no elections? They wonder, what do we sit in the office doing, yet we have no elections? And at this juncture, I would wish to invite comments from you. I want to hear what you know about us. What does IEBC do? Uh, outside the election period, what do we do? Because I know you know. By the way, how many have been, have been uh, election officials in the past? Those who have worked with IBC in the past? 
Pengine ulikuwa presiding officer when you were a youth in the university. You worked with us, yes? Good. As a well, yes. Ah, good. And I see a learned uh, counsel here, I know him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So I can see we are, uh, at least we know, we know something about IBC. And some of us here have conducted elections. And this is very good. How many have voted? Let's see. Wangapi wame participate kwa voting? I will not ask who you voted for. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Now respond to my question. What does IBC do outside the election period? What do we do? Able to scare? Training for the staff, right? Yeah. Mungina, yes. <laughs> we didn't register those who are who are pastors, no? Yes. Those who have gone to the other side of the world. We delete them from the register. Very good. Any other? What else do we do? Yes. Wonderful, yeah. We conduct elections for other bodies. In the morning, we had, uh, we had the LSK president, Bwana Theuri, and it is us who conducted that election. So we do it. Anything else that you think we do? Yeah? Yeah, we deal with disputes relating, relating to, related to election. Very good. Yeah, yes, at the back? We conduct by elections. Uh huh. Yeah. Procurement, eh? Yeah. Na ile ya sava pia. We we. I think we have procured for that. Mhm. Mm Kuna. I think we know. And that is good. Yes. Another one is here. Yes, production. Good. In fact, we are still registering voters in our offices. We are waiting for the chairman to, niche, to issue a gazette notice stopping us. And that is when we shall stop. Any other person before I lock out that period? So allow us to project something on that. Now, the electoral cycle has been uh, divided into three phases. So we shall look at those phases of the electoral cycle. And we shall begin by defining what the electoral cycle is. I remember when we were in school, we used to define the life cycle of a mosquito. Ama ilikuwa lava. Ilikuwa lava ama ni katapila. How they do metamorphosis until they become a butterfly. You remember? It was a cycle. We want to see that cycle of IBC. We rotate like that doing what? What are these activities that keep us cyclic doing? They are the ones that you have mentioned. So we want to place them in the different phases. So what is an electoral... So what is an election cycle? So we are saying that an election cycle is a series of activities that happen in a systematic and procedural manner between one general election and the next one. A series of activities. Those are the activities you have mentioned. And we do them in a systematic manner. So you'll hear the chairman say now, we are gazetting, it is a period for voter registration. Now it is a period for voter education. So we carry out our activities in a very systematic and procedural manner between one general election and the other one. What are you going to challenge? So, me, Pekayango. 
Um, the electoral process follows a cyclic approach, which is summarized in an electoral cycle. The electoral cycle has various phases of the electoral process and is designed to guide the elections management body in implementation of electoral activities. It also enables the stakeholders to understand the various stages in the electoral process. Now, what are the phases of the electoral cycle? One, uh, we have the pre-election uh, stage or phase, and that is the preparation stage. We are preparing for election. And then we have the election phase, and we have the post-election phase, the strategy phase. So we want to see what does IBC do during the pre-election stage or phase. Unajua nilisema hii ni adult learning. Yuko hapi ile mic? Because already you have mentioned these points. I wanted them to to assist me read through them so that we move on now to the next presenter. Hebu mpe. Hii ni adult learning. Mimi ndio nakwambia yule atasoma. Kifanya mkono hivi kienda but here we are learned friend ambaye ameva aspects and the hijab. Yes. That one. So I just read through. Yeah. Okay. Um, so review of electoral laws, registration of voters and update of the role of voters, verification and inspection of the register of voters, review of electoral boundaries where applicable, drawing of electoral calendar, drawing of election budget. So that is the pre-election phase. The big question we should be asking ourselves, which is the pre-election? And when does the pre-election start? Or wh wh how can we tell it is a pre-election period? And when is the election period? When the chairman was here of IBC, he mentioned that already he issued a gazette notice of the general election. So which period are we now? We are in the election period. So this pre-election period we are talking about before the gazettement was done. So we have already done all this. Budget iko tayari. We have the timelines. The electoral timelines are there. The electoral boundaries where we needed to add a few polling stations here and there. We engaged our stakeholders and already we have done that. Uh, verification and inspection of the register of voters, that is pending, but we are already doing the inspection bit. Registration of voters, bado tunaendelea. We also have an overlap of this period. We have an overlap of the pre-election phase and the election phase. Now, the pre-election phase, again, we have procurement of election materials. We engage our stakeholders. We inform them of our processes and where we require their input, we engage them. We seek partner coordination, bodies like IFES. We interact with them. We accredit voter education providers and election observers. They apply for that accreditation. Normally, IBC will advertise in the local dailies and, it will be, and even on our website. We do certification and publication of the register of voters. It is, yet to be, it is yet to be certified by the chairman. And then we do procurement and testing of election technology. We are, I think we are good with the technology because we tested. We are still using KIMS, the KIMS that is here. Now, what does IBC do in the election phase? Sasa tukiingia saa hii tunaongojea kupambana na election. What does IBC do? Hiyo mic imeenda wapi? Sasa tupe hii. That was a she, patia hii. Give any of your choice. Patia ule unaona ako sawa kusoma. Kwanza huyo na mjua pea ye. E, eh, mpe. Uh, I wouldn't say there is conflict of interest. 
<laughs> yes, uh, what does the IBC do in the election phase? One, monitoring political and political party primaries. Receiving party list from political parties. Nomination stroke registration of political party and independent candidates for elections. Uh, monitoring of campaigns and enforcing of the election campaign schedule. Enforcement of, the, of electoral laws and code of conduct. Thank you so much. Now, so far, what we, ha what we are doing uh, here, I will tell you that we are already enforcing the electoral laws and the code of conduct. You had Sabina Chege the other day summoned by IEBC. And I think we still have more who have been summoned, isn't it? So we are yet, uh, we are also monitoring political party primaries. I think some of them have already scheduled their dates. Uh, we are yet to, regist to register our candidates for elections. That will come sometimes in June. So let's move on. Uh huh. Pea mwingine, pea uyo kone iba hapo. Anakuwa nea? <laughs> I, I read? Yes, please. Uh, monitoring and enforcing campaign financing, uh, stakeholders engagement, partner coordination, uh, voter education, conducting elections, telling and announcement of election results, declaration of results, and dealing with election petition and appeals. Thank you. So we are... We, we are in that phase because very soon we'll be conducting our elections on the 9th of August. And we'll be telling the results, we'll be dealing with election petition and appeals, and that is where you're also coming in to do your prosecution on election offenses. Now let's go to the last phase. Now the last phase entails uh, the post-election, and that is where we come up with different strategies. Uh, what does IABC do in the post-election phase? Uh, post-election evaluation, auditing and evaluation of processes and systems, documentation and archiving of election results and other records, voter education, stakeholder engagement, institution strengthening, professional development of staff, review of electoral laws, review of manual and other material. Mm. So that one has already been done. We have uh, so several manuals in place. We have already reviewed uh, the electoral laws where the commission thinks we require some changes. Uh, the, the, we have, I think the commission has proposed uh, amendment of these regulations. We, already, we have already done institutional strengthening, capacity building, a little restructuring here and there. The other day we had the other commissioners hired. So I think we are good to go for this election period. So that is the first uh, election phase. It was done. An evaluation was done. We looked at our strengths and our weaknesses. We call it the SWOT analysis was done. Now, we, we want to see the electoral cycle diagram because it speaks to what we have said. So that is usually the cycle which begins with the election period, the pre-election period, then the election period, then the post-election period. And the, whatever is inside are the activities we have mentioned that the commission does within the cycle, within the five years before we conduct another election. And those are the activities we have mentioned here. And that is a now a more summarized electoral cycle where we have the legal framework and uh, we have electoral planning and implementation. This is what you are saying, training and education, voter registration. So it is a whole electoral cycle now, summarized. So I think with that, we, are, we now understand what the electro, electoral cycle is. Now from there, we are now going to look at what happens on the polling day. Now that we understand the five years, what IEBC is doing within the five years, and what IEBC is doing within the election period, I'm going to usher in my colleague, Bwanangunjiri, now to take us through some of the election officials and their roles. 
because we are we are we are very keen on the polling procedures because that is where you come in handy karibu bwana ngunjire thank you let's appreciate beatrice thank you very much i, I think uh, i'll just do as beatrice has done for those of us who have conducted directions as pos clerks and the rest we want to name the directions of issues now that our mandate has been explained, who are the people that will conduct the elections and at what level? I'm throwing the, it to you. At the top level and then at the bottom level. Who will conduct elections? Someone. Yes. I saw a hand up there. Tell us. Just name one. Who will conduct the elections? And at what level? Is a hand there? Okay, uh, forgive me because it's a bit of guesswork, but uh, I'm remembering what the Chief Justice said in the morning. So I believe the returning officer is the highest, is the senior most, and then the clerk is at the operations. <laughs> and we're all right. Returning officers. We have three types of returning officers. One. Yes. There's a constituents returning officer. Good constituents returning officer. That's where the, the Ngujiris and the Beatrice are. Then two. Yes, county returning officer. And the last one. Yes. Tell us. There? The chairman, that's very right. So those are the three key. The chairman, the top, he conducts which ones? The presidential election. The popular form 34A and form 34B. Then we go to the county and the constituency. Now, where the rubber meets the road is at the constituency level. Because the chairman does not recruit POs, he does not recruit cracks. The county returning officer does not recruit POs. He, also does, he or she does not also recruit cracks. It is the Gujiris and the Beatrice who recruits the presiding officers and the cracks. That's where the rubber meets the road. And uh, very fast, uh, now that we have identified those, let's see the others. I don't want to go through them. Uh, surprisingly, the presidential returning officer has no, has no deputy. So, I don't know, the, you are the legal minds, eh? If anything happens, I don't know what will happen. But that is as it is, eh? Yes. So, at the county, he has, there is a deputy, at the constituency, there is a deputy. Then the presiding, the deputy, and the clerks. Then we also have the county ICT, the constituency ICT, the support director trainers, the county voter educators, the constituency voter educators, the county warehouse assistant, the constituency logistics officer, and the security. Remember, all those minus the chair, the county, and the constituency, the rest are temporary staff. Are we there? Are we there? All those minus the count, the county ICT. County ICT is the Martin Nyagas. And uh, the rest are temporary staff. We recruit them on temporary basis. Then the security, I'm sure we have police officers here, right? Right? Do we have people from Mutiambai? Hawako? Wako? Yes. Now, we want to look at uh, what does uh, the chairman, what does he do? Okay. Uh, issues notification of an election, conducts nomination for presidential candidates, monitors presidential campaigns, 
resolves electoral disputes, overall overseer of general elections, appointment of county and constituency returning officers, spokesperson of the entire commission on election matters, identifies national tallying centers. Thank you. That's uh, some of the roles of the chairman. And the first one has already been done. He was here and that's what he said on 20th. He did that. Give it to someone else. Um, sets up a presidential election communication center, tallies and declares presidential results, issues a certificate to the winner, gazettes election results, delivering of a written notification of the results to the Chief Justice and incumbent President, publishes the polling results, forms on an online public portal maintained by the Commission. Thank you. And we are done with the, the roles of the Chair. In between the Presidential Returning Officer and the Constituency Returning Officer, we, have, we ought to have the County Returning Officer. But uh, much of the work that is done at the county is almost the same as it is done at the constituency. Tonight, there is a complete and accurate consistency register of voters, visits, maps, and inspects polling stations to assess their suitability and availability for the polling day coordinates and conducts voter education in consistency, identifies and secures consistency nomination center. Thank you. We are moving on. Give it to another gentleman or lady. Conduct nomination for member of National Assembly and member of County Assembly monitors and supervises electoral campaigns in the constituency, coordinates and supervises political parties' activities in the constituency. Thank you. Now, if you look at uh, the first bullet there, at the constituency, we only deal with the member of the National Assembly and the member of the county assembly, popularly the MCEs and the MNE. Next. Arbitrates electoral disputes at constituency level, recruits, trains, and deploys elec election officials, shares the list of election officials with Office of the Registrar of Political Parties 14 days to the election through the Commission, facilitates the administration of oath of secrecy to all election staff train candidates and political parties agents and brief election observers and media displays and register of displays the register of voters in all polling stations seven days to the election thank you distributes and retrieves election materials, safeguards all the election materials and ensures safety of the election officials, ensures that the KIMS devices and its accessories are available, working and fully charged, conducts elections, announces tallies and declares election results for member of National Assembly and member of County Assembly. And lastly, announces and collates pres president, senator, county, woman, member of the National Assembly, and governor election results. Thank you very much. Now, those are the roles. Now, because the constituency returning officer is only one, he recruits someone else to help him or her to conduct, to do all that, all that work. And the person, these are three the presiding officers, the deputy presiding officers, 
and the clerks. And the person who actually conducts the elections at the polling station is a presiding officer. And in front of us, you can see a station. Those who have voted will agree me, with me that that is the way the arrangement is. And this, it is the work of the presiding officer to do all this. This is the arrangement. And the way the ballot papers are issued, they must study with the arrangement, the issuing, the counting, and the declaration. But funny enough, eh, this is the first. But he will only he'll count this first, said. Then these two, these two, the same. All of them, the six of them. Then after that, atachukua zote ya pereke nani? Constituency returning officer. The constituency returning officer will tarry all these six. But he or she will only declare this one and this one. That is the MNA and the MCA. Are we there? Are we there? Is it clear now? So in Gujiri, we only declare the several MCAs and the MP. Then he will take the four maze, 36, 34, all the way to 39. 34, I'll take to the chairman. 37, 38, 39 to the county. Then, plus the B series. The B series is a correlation. I think I, I want to stop there. And, uh, Dina. You are next. How many Martin? Martin, no, ni Martin. Martin. Uh, thank you, Bwana Ngunjiri. Now, um, we've gone through the, the roles of the permanent staff. Those are the returning officer and the like. But we said we have another kind of staff who are temporary. These are the clerks that you're going to have in our polling stations. Uh, if we've walked into a polling station, there is somebody we meet up on Nje. We have somebody called a queuing clerk. A queuing clerk, their role is to direct voters to their correct polling stations. Now, um, how many people, what is the maximum number of people in a polling station? Kwasheria. Maximum. Let's take a wild guess. How many? 700. So we have polling stations that are capped at seven, 700. We cannot have more than 700 people. So what happens when you are being registered, we are registered in a registration center, but when you get to elections, we cannot have more than 700 people. So a registration center can have up to even 10,000 people, but we need to split it in groups of seven, 700. So what we do in this case, we split groups in alphabetical order of your first name in your ID. So we'll have all the Martins, Akina Albert, kwa station yao. Alafu tukienda hivyo tapata Akina Martin, watu wa M kwa station yao. So the role of the queuing clerk is to direct us according to our first names. I know we'll ask mwana tu kuchagua jine ingine. Munajua ni kwa nini? Atujaita gua anything else apart from the first name? Tukikutana na kina washira kama mimi, washira, wanjiro, nani, tutaanza kupiga story kwa laini yetu. Kweli ya mwongo Nairobi. Tukifika kwa kina onyango, otieno, si tutakuwa kwa laini? Laini moja. So we had to look for a mechanism <laughs> that at least is fair. Tusipatane sisi wote kwa laini moja, inaanza kushanga. Mbona hizi kura zinaenda off. Station 1, Kura Ziko Uku, Station number 3, Uko, Inongea Mambo Ingine. So the, so the role of the queuing clerk is to direct people. Then we have another clerk, who I'm going to call clerk number 1. Once the queuing clerk ushers you into the station, you're going to meet a clerk. Wakwanza kabisa, tunamuita clerk number 1, and the clerk will be holding 
a device which we call a Kim's kit. Um, you see, there's a, there's, there are some regulations. They introduced the use of technology in elections. And in the use of te technology, we said you're going to do what we call biometric voter registration. Now, after you've been registered, it means we need to use your biometrics to identify you. So clerk number one in the station will have a device that is going to have an electronic voter identification application. So they'll identify you using your biometrics. So that will be the role of clerk number one. After now, the queuing clerk has directed you to the correct station. Now, in case, in case, but in by, where we have old people, some, some biometrics might not be able to pull out your, your record. So there's a mechanism, IBC is left to have a complementary mechanism. So your record will still be in the device. The clerk will be able to pull your record using either your ID or your passport, the one you used to register. Then in the presence of the agents, we have a form that is filled. Once people are able to positively identify you from the photo on the device and your details, your ID, the agents are called to witness and they fill that particular form for you to be allowed to proceed to the next to the next um, to the next clerk. So you proceed to clerk number two. Clerk number two, Utampata Meshika a printed copy of the of the register. So at this clerk's level, they are going to cross out your name from the printed copy of the of the register. Now uh, somebody might ask why do we have the printed copy of the register? and the electronic version of the, of the register. For some reason, um, this device, I need to change it. I need to have another record of the people who have come to, to vote. Secondly, you can quickly brush through the printed copy of the register to count the number of people and compare. This is a check. I have identified 50 people electronically. Do I have 50 people crossed out from the co printed copy of the, of the register? So we need to have a control mechanism that allows us to check the clerks. I cannot have clerk number one with 100 and have clerk number two with 70. So we are making control, control measures. Then we go to clerk number three. Clerk number three will be, even at clerk number two, uh, something I need to mention at clerk number two level, the clerk number two will also call out the name of the voter. Kama ni mini mengi atasema Martin Nyaga, aki shout. Because now if, um, it's not Martin Nyaga who is present there. The agents can raise an objection or the, the person behind them on the, on the queue. Maramingi watu wanajuana. So somebody can raise an objection if a, a different name is mentioned, called out. So clerk number two will stamp the face of a counterfoil. A ballot paper has a counterfoil uh, which indicates the serial number, same as the one on the ballot. And the and recharge the ballot paper, fold it vertically, and issue to the voter. So we have the presidential and member of national assembly at clerk number three. Uh, then we have clerk number four who will issue the county assembly and the senator ballot paper. Then we have clerk number five who will um, give the county woman member to the national assembly. Then clerk number five will direct the voter to the, to the booth for the voter to be able to mark to mark the ballots. Clerk number six will ensure that you place the ballot papers in the correct boxes. Tuliambua na ume tunakuanga color blind. Ukweli ya mwongo. Sijui tukipitia hapa kama watu wengine watanza kuona ikiwa yellow. Hama wengine watanza ikiwa white. So we normally put a clerk there to be able to guide you 
through these particular boxes because there are six. And a voter can easily place a ballot in the wrong, in the wrong box. Then that particular clerk will be responsible to mark your, your small finger that you voted using an indelible pen. Now, after the close of polling, the role of the six clerks that you've mentioned is going to change. We are going to use the same clerks to do what? To count, to tally the results that have been, uh, for the votes that have been cast on that particular, particular day. So they are going to be the counting clerks. They will be responsible for laying out the room into a counting room. And they are also going to assist in sorting and counting of the ballot papers. So the roles uh, I've indicated, the six clerks will be given these roles in terms of we are going to redistribute their roles. Um, and uh, like there, the role of clerk six, clerk three, issuance of the ballot, MCAs and everything. Then we have the Tallinn centers. In the Tallinn centers, we have, we have different categories of clerks who are indicated there. Election communication center, they are going to pick any communication from the field. What time did the station open? Are there any incidents? How many people every two hours are voted? Then we have the other group of clerks who are going to be data entry clerks. When the results come back to the, to the Tallinn Center, we are going to move from the A series of forms, moving to the B series. We need to do all that data entry, so we need the data entry clerks. When we have the filing and documentation clerks, as the results come in, they need two people who are going to document, uh, who are going to file those ones. Then we have the materials. So many materials are issued on this particular day, so we need some clerks who are going to collect the same materials at the Tallinn, at the Tallinn Center. So um, then we have another very important person, the constituency logistics officer. This is the person who is responsible for issuance and retrieval of ma materials at the constituency level. Um, th that is the role of uh, the constituency logistics officer continued. Checklists, so we are going to have all these materials. There's somebody who needs to make sure that they are given adequate materials for them to be able to conduct the elections, including the, both the strategic materials and non-strategic materials. Materials are one of the most sensitive things in elections. If I don't give you ballot papers, if I don't give you the boxes, then it means you will not be able to move. So this is a very important person in the electoral process. Um, wanted to list, uh, we have another officer, constituency. We have the county and constituency ICT officers. Uh, because of the use of technology, we must have this particular officer. Um, they are responsible for troubleshooting. There is e-learning. Uh, we have the electronic identification of voters. They are going to take uh, clerks through that. We have setting up of the tally server. Now this is where everybody says, "Tufungulie server." Tufungulie server. Uh, we have been told it's not tangible. It's just software that captures the results as they come from the polling stations. Uh, we've been told by the first presenter, uh, our director, that the results from the polling station are always final. So whatever is coming to this server is exactly what is from the polling stations. And there are questions in the first session. What is the role of the RO? What is the role of the RO in terms of verification of, of results? Now you kuswali ikacho ikiwa homework. Ikacho ikiwa homework. So um, we have a communication center system. The communication center system, you know, we keep updating you on what is happening in terms of how many people have been identified thus far during the election day. This is where we are able to get that information. So 
there are roles of that constituency ICT officer. I've just brushed through them. Um, then we have our good people, our security officers. They are able to maintain law and order. That is one. And they are able also to provide security of our election materials and also security of our officers who are conducting the elections. Uh, in elections, we have stakeholders. We have various stakeholders that we work with um, to carry out this particular process. We have our agents who witness the entire process. Their role is very important, and we've been told uh, an example being given the Juja by election, when you have your agents, they're able to update you on the happenings of the, of the day. So we have the observers. We can have both local and international who are able to observe our process and do reports on it. Then you have our stakeholder, the media. Very important people. They give you reports on happenings of the day, either live or recorded videos. They're able to report to us results as uh, some of the politicians are voting, we are able to see the media taking this role very well. So with that, I will welcome our next presenter to take us through the simulation. I welcome our, my good friend, Bwana Morris Ligulu, to take over from here. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Baranyaga. Okay, round of applause for Martin. Yeah, I'll uh, take it over from uh, Martin. We have gone through the mandate of IBC. We have gone through roles of our officials because we cannot simulate something when we do not know those who are responsible for that. Is that not the position? Now, hey, to Melala, but now it is going to be live. We are going to participate. We are going, some of you are going to be agents. Some of you are going to be presiding officers. Some of you are going to be clerks. And we want to ensure that after this, you appreciate what goes into real conduct of ele election, and that is polling day activities. The procedures. In the, morning, in the morning session, you had a voting and anything polling takes place at the polling station. Kila kitu inaisha hapo until results, results are announced at the polling station, but not declared. They are just announced. Now, for us to succeed, let us just stretch a bit. You know, we are now getting into practical session. Just stretch, just stretch. Yeah. Yeah, that, that one minute, I think, is uh, good enough to make us uh, proceed. Okay, we can uh, resume our seats, then we proceed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we do elections, a lot of preparations goes into it. A lot of it. And we have been taken through the pre-election period. We have been taken through all the three cycles of elections. That shows you the amount of pre preparation that goes into election. It is one day activity. It is a one day event. But the preparations that goes into it is massive. We have to train all the poll officials that are, have been mentioned, including myself as a permanent staff, and the person who goes, the, and the person who will later become the returning officer, I'm also trained. 
come that uh, time of election, including presiding officers, clerks, everyone. Now, we have materials that we need to do. We, when we, we talked of uh, activities in the period, we talked of procurement. Now, what, what are the things that we procure, be, actually? Some I might not mention, but I want to mention materials that we are going to use during polling day. And what are some of these materials that we use? Okay. I'll start by mentioning the polling day, the polling station diary. We call it PSD. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important document in our election operations. During election day, Indium Semokweli, of all the activities that happened during that day, we document everything in this PSD. And it is from this polling station diary that every presiding officer must have. In this, at this juncture, when it comes to PSD, it is not a matter of May, but a presiding officer must have a PSD. It is from the PSD that we can derive the occurrences of, of how the polling took place in that particular station. And it is from this book that we have all the election materials required for election. And I want to take you very fast through some of these materials that we need. Some may not be here, and some I will show you. Let's take, for instance, I want to go through some of the most important ones, and these are the stamps. Now, we, are, we have various stamps, and that is the IBC. You remember you were told clerk number, clerk number 345, they stamp at the in the uh, at the face of the counter at the face of the uh, counter for and at the back of the ballot paper we were told that there is the specific stamp they use and that is just the stamp known as ibc stamp it's just written ibc for now i'm training you on this because i know there are some changes that are being taken but i'll take you through what is there. Is that not the position of uh, director? Yeah, there are some minor changes that will take place, but as we speak, that is the position. We stamp at the face of the counterfoil and at the back using IBC stamp. Now, we have a stamp known as spoiled. Most of the time we hear people talk of uh, a, a vote has been spoiled, a vote, a vote has been rejected, but what does it mean for a vote to be spoiled? I want to explain this. Oh, okay, no, let, let someone uh, try this one. What does it mean for a ballot paper to be spoiled? Because we have a stamp for spoiled. What does it mean for a, valo, a ballot paper to be spoiled? Any attempt, trial? Any attempt from the floor? <laughs> yes, sir. Twice and then realizes at what point? <laughs> that, that is exactly what I was looking to. <laughs> that is what I was looking for. Does it matter? It matters for us a lot. Why does that matter? It is spoiled if a voter car walks into a polling station, then marks a ballot paper wrongly. Maybe it is a presidential ballot paper or maybe an MCA ballot paper he realizes that he has marked the ballot paper wrongly, but has not cast the vote. 
Bado akunazo, haja? He has not cast the vote. Then he comes back to the, to the presiding officer and then says, oh, excuse me, sir, excuse me, madam, this one, I've marked it wrongly. Then a presiding officer is authorized to replace twice for a particular election, to replace at maximum twice. What does that mean? Twice in that, and as a koja kwanza, this one, has, he has uh, marked it wrongly. He goes back again, destroys it. He comes back, he will still be given another opportunity. But akiaribu hiyo tena, and he comes back for the third ballot paper, he will get it with a warning. This is the final. If you mark it wrongly or you do any mistake with it, you'll just have to cast it the way it is. Is that clear? So spoiled is a ballot paper which maybe has been marked wrongly but has not been cast. Because by the way, these are terms that are used uh, aimlessly. It, uh, why do we have so many spoiled ballot papers? Why do we have, in fact, so many people cannot differentiate be between spoiled and rejected. But that is why I am here. So I've mentioned spoiled. Closely related to spoiled, but now used after the person has cast the vote. This one, the stamp, in fact, the stamp IBC and spoiled, those ones are used during polling time. Between the time the station opens and the time the station closes. Now we have a stamp known as Re IBC rejected. This rejected stamp is the one used during counting. Maybe a, a voter has marked twice for a, has marked for more than one candidate. Then the presiding officer will reject that ballot paper because it is not clearly, it doesn't show who the person was voting for. The next stamp again is rejection objected to. <laughs> I, let me just explain because it's always a tricky one. Uh, rejection objected to. Presiding officer has been trained so well on what should be accepted, a valid ballot paper, which is given in favor of a particular candidate, and a ballot paper which is not valid, which is uh, not in favor of any other person. So there is a situation whereby the presiding officer has rejected the ballot. That, no, this one is not clearly marked. It's not well marked. So the presiding officer has rejected. Sindio. But the agents dispute that rejection. They object. I mean, the agents object that rejection of the presiding officer. The person, the presiding officer will stamp it rejection objected to his rejection as the presiding officer has been rejected by the agents. But the final decision remains that, it rem the final decision is that the ballot remains rejected. And during counting, it is not given in favor of any candidate. Is that clear? I hope I've tried to make it as easy as possible. But again, no, give me disputed first so that. Disputed. No, disputed. Oh, sorry. Okay. Then there is also another stamp which is known as disputed. Again, I just want to bring it to your attention, but the issue of disputed and rejection objected to Buana Director, you are still discussing on those issues. 
but let me just mention them the way we have been using them. Now, disputed. When the presiding officer says this ballot paper is in favor of candidate A, but others say this one is in favor of the other candidate, the presiding officer will still give it in favor of that candidate but mark it disputed. But give it, it is counted for that candidate because presiding officer's decision is final at the polling station. Again, there are six ballot paper, uh, box, uh, ballot boxes. There is the stamp tray. There are situations whereby, as you count presidential ballots, that one you have opened, then you find uh, MCS, MCS uh, ballot paper in the presidential ballot box. That one is, my, is stamped stray and is not counted. Yeah, it is stray in the presidential ballot box. It is stray here. It's not, it's not supposed to be here. <laughs> it is stray. So, for all those, it must be. But immediately someone cast it maybe in a different we will just stamp it straight, but we won't wait that we take it back to where it belongs. No, we don't do that. I think I'm clear with that. I want to move very fast. Then uh, I'm through with the... No. Yeah, then there is also the stamp presiding officer, which is used to stamp all the statutory documents in the polling station. For instance, results are stamped and signed by the presiding officer's rubber stamp. Th these are key issues. These are key materials that we need. You remember there's a time <laughs> some presiding officer gave. Uh, you can give a wrong stamp during the time when it is not required. For instance, I've mentioned only two stamps to be used during polling. If maybe a presiding, it can be problem. That's why we usually tell them to go to do a dry run of uh, election. But I'll take you through that. Then the most important again, another important material is the seal. All seals have got serial numbers. And it is made in such a way that you cannot, immediately you seal it, the only way to remove it from that particular point is to destroy it. I'll take you through that when we are doing it live. And now we have got the most, another important item are the ballot papers. These are also in the custody of presiding officer. Now. I don't want to get into so many materials. I want to leave it at that particular point because those are the main materials we are going to use in this simulation. And with those remarks, with those so many or few remarks, I want us to get into real practicals. We may have mentioned, uh, before I even get into that, you have been taken through all the officials. But they just mentioned presiding officer and deputy presiding officer. Remember, presiding officer is the person in charge of the polling station. Not a polling center, but a polling station. I wish uh, Washira could mention, you mentioned, Sidio. But you did bring out the difference between centers and stations, by the way. But we have got polling stations. We no longer have issues of uh, stream one, stream two. We have polling stations. So presiding officer are, is the person in charge who ensures smooth flow 
of uh, voters who ensure security and is in charge of the police. And in the evening, presiding officer is the person who will transmit the results. And presiding officer is assisted by the DPUT presiding officer. In case the presiding officer falls sick or whatever, deputy presiding officer can assume all the roles of a presiding officer. Thank you very much. Now, I want us, some will be presiding officers and their deputy, and, uh, deputy presiding officer, and some will be clerks, clerk number one, clerk number two, clerk number three, clerk number four, clerk number five. There are five clerks. You know, when we talk of, you usually hear, we mention those so many billions. We are looking for so many billions. It goes into the wages of our officials. Because what you, can, you, you can already imagine the number of staff we have in one station. Then, there are some people who are also authorized to be in the polling station. We have got the media, we have got observers, and we have got the agents. Agents are, the agents actively participate by, by the, we went through the roles of agents. Didn't we? We didn't. Oh, by the way, these are crucial people, and I just brush through by the way. Agents. Agents, these are the people who represent their candidates or their parties at the polling station. And one most important role for party agents or, polit or candidates agents is to witness assisted voter while being to witness a voter who doesn't know how to mark a ballot paper while the presiding officer assists that voter. If a voter walks in and did not come with someone to assist, that, to assist that voter, then the presiding officer is authorized to assist the voter. But mark me, get me clearly, presiding officer can assist all those who require assistance, but he, doesn't, he or she doesn't do it alone. He must do it being witnessed by the agents. But agents cannot decide to be the person to assist any voter. OK. Now, I'll take the role of the presiding officer, Yoni Mejitolea. And uh, Lena Kilonzi will take the role of the deputy presiding officer, Amejit Olea Tayari. <laughs> then uh, Beatrice will take the role of clerk number one, Amejit Olea Tayari. No, Washira, well, Martin is clerk number one, Beatrice clerk number two, uh, Lena clerk number three. No, Lena is the deputy. Gujiri is clerk number three. Now I miss clerk number four, clerk number five. I miss agents. I miss voters. And at the same time, I lack, I don't have observers. So those critical roles to Mejitolea, Sisi Wenyewe. Now, just a brief one. No, to watch any ache, let me get volunteers to be clerk number three and four from the team. Who will be clerk number three? Arakaraka to endele, to Malaysia ima nenu sai. Now it is live. Yeah? Thank you very much, sir. Clerk number four, I mean, clerk number, we have up to clerk number three. Clerk number four, then clerk number five. Another volunteer? Thank you very much. Karibuni Apambele. Now, the, the arrangement is such that clerk number one, by the way, polling station must be 
and I mean must be arranged in such a way that it allows easy flow of voters as they enter the polling station. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'll give you the jacket. <laughs> now, uh, let me just take you through how the, the, the way they are, by the way. I'm assuming this is the entrance. Immediately you enter the polling station. The first person you will meet is the presiding officer by the door. So, okay, security who are the In fact, in most cases, let's be sincere. In most cases, where there is no violence and there is calm, we even say they can just stay aside, Uko, and just come because we don't want also voters to feel intimidated. Okay, so but they stay outside. So immediately you get into the polling station, you first find the presiding officer. In this, in this case, it's me. Then after me is clerk number one for easy flow. A voter will flow clerk number one, clerk number two, clerk number three, clerk number four, clerk number five. Then ten a muisho, ni deputy presiding officer at the far end because Deputy presiding officer is the person who will be assisting the voters to try and ensure that voters cast their ballots in the right ballot boxes. And deputy presiding officer again is in charge of the indelible pen. So that is the arrangement. Now, clerks, IBC officials are here. At the opposite, by the way, Ballot boxes are arranged this way. The booth is always put such that immediately you are from the clerks. You get to the booth. Mark your ballot, your ballot paper. Then come. Start casting them. And immediately you are done. Your cuticle is marked. And then you leave the polling station. This far end, these front seats, these are the places where we have agents. And agents, we can have political party agents, we can have uh, candidate agents. I think they are only those two. Political party agents or candidate agents. Those are authorized into the polling station. Uh, uh, anyway, I'll rush you people because time is not on my side. Agents, I want to assume those who are in front will be the agents. Observers, we also have observers. Please, observers are not supposed to do anything. Agents can race any observation, they, I mean agents can raise an issue, but observers are just to note, just as the name indicates. Atakama Najua, even if an observer knows that this thing is being done in the wrong way, they are not supposed to indicate it is being done, in, to come and interject that it is being done. Theirs is to observe and just write, note it down. Even if Whatever happens, their system, the only persons allowed to interject are the agents. Now we have agents here, and including observers, including the media. They see it in such a way that they can comfortably see what is happening here. And in this arrangement, immediately you get in by the, it is clear, it is in the clear view of agents, what IBC staff are doing here. It is in the clear view of observers what IBC staff are doing here. Now, to start the simulation, now, voters are just pick at randomly because it is, uh, we will just pick some 10 for purposes of counting in the evening. Now it is around 4 a.m. I want to assume it is 4 a.m. We are starting off, okay? 
I had arrived, by the way, under normal circumstances, our officers should sleep in their polling stations, but under some circumstances, they might even arrive early in the morning. Normal circumstances, they need to sleep in those polling stations. So at around 4 a.m., there is now the pre-poll activities. What are some of the pre-poll activities that the presiding officer and his staff need to go through? Because you have to prepare yourself before start of the poll. Because we usually the, the constitutional start time of polling is at 6 a.m. That is the earliest you can start. It's 6 a.m. on 9th. 9th, 6 a.m., or we expect all polling stations to start. But before that, for you to start at that particular point, there are things you have to do. What are some of the things I need to do as the presiding officer? First of all, I'll brief my staff on their roles as presiding officers. At that particular point also, I'll be admitting agents into the polling station. and even observers into the polling station, and even media into the polling station. Admission, there are requirements for agents to be admitted into the polling station, and they must have taken an oath. They must have their ID, letter of appointment, and an oath of secrecy signed. Now, I brief my staff. We do, there is something known as dry run. What is a dry run? What can, uh, can someone guess what is a dry run? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We usually train our staff, you have to do a dry run, and that is the time you even establish, do you have the right stamp? Do you have the right ballot papers? You have, then you brief them again on their roles. Role clerk number one, hakuna mambuzake hapo. Clerk number two, hakuna register. Clerk number three, hakuna uh, ballot papers for the president and MNA. Clerk number four has got the ballot papers for the, is for the member of county assembly and senator. Clerk number five has got the ballot papers for count, county woman member to the National Assembly and governor. Ballot papers come arranged. They are, serially, they are arranged serially. And who is the custodian? I'm the custodian, and I'll have now to give them one by one. Ballot paper, Yakwanza, I'll give them. Then immediately we are past 50 voters. Then I get the counter, counterfoil, then give them, uh, issue another set of ballot papers. Okay. Now, having briefed my presiding officers, by the way, I forgot something important, the issue of uh, demarcation of the polling station. Demarcation, by the way, that's why we have got the sisal twine over there. You will always find that sisal twine, not that it is a security thing or whatever, but it, it helps in bringing order in the polling station. We will always demarcate, make, make sure that at least when voters come, they know where to follow. Uh, we usually talk of 400 meters radius. But within the slums, how do you get 400 meters radius? <laughs> but 400 meters radius, that one is, with the, of that polling center, that one is known as a polling center. And a presiding officer, even if it is in a densely populated area, the presiding officer, if you find you some doing something which is not too okay within that 400 meters radius, he's capable of uh, uh, taking some actions on it. Now, 
We've just before, again, uh, 6 a.m., there is this uh, KEMS machine. You have to look for network. Uh, then, it is this, but the opening of the polling station happen, happens at two levels. So the first level of opening the station is by using the kings. At exactly six, as the presiding officer first, before you even hand over the kings to clerk number one, this register, all the register come with the QR code on them. And this is exactly what is used to open the station using the KMS machine. So you'll, the, the presiding officer will scan the register and then open the station in the KMS at exactly six. Then as the presiding officer, whether there are voters in the queue or not, you need to declare the station open. But before you get to that again, there is the issue of sealing of the ballot boxes. Very important step in election. And I want, I'll give, I'll demonstrate that using the presidential ballot box. Now, you... Under normal circumstances, you have admitted agents into the polling station. You have admitted agents into the polling station. This, all these things happen before six. You have to show the emptiness of the ballot box before you seal it. Even if agents are not there, you only show it to God. <laughs> so, so, even if agents are not there, you only show it to God that God, it is actually empty. <laughs> that brings us to this question. Must we wait for agents to be there for us to start this process, or must we wait for agents to open the station to the floor? You, 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 have, you have really seen the importance. Do we really have to wait for them to declare, to check that the ballot box is empty? Yes, sir. Are, are we in agreement with that? Contrary, any contrary opinion that we must wait for them? Yes, sir. Okay, you, he has also brought another dimension of it. Unfortunately, we don't have specific time for agents to arrive. Even though administratively we usually say we admit them at 5.30 in the morning, but that one is administrative. There's really no time frame. So for us to start, if a PEO wants to start early, Ikifika 5.30, immediately it is 5.30, start, you remember the process I want to take you through, you'll do it for all the six ballot boxes. The more time you waste, <laughs> the more, by the way, you will eat into your time of opening. So, you don't need, as a presiding officer, you cannot wait, but again, you cannot start early, the earlier than uh, 
uh, than 522, start selling it. I see using any agents wafike. You cannot get it to the polling station in the evening. Now, where's Saizo? Ushaaza. You start selling the ballot, but that one also is not allowed. Now, how do you go about it? As the presiding officer, you will, after you have shown the emptiness to everybody present in the room, you will come and fix the lead. And you must ensure they are of the right color. The color of the lead matches whatever is on the bed using seals. You first ensure you do it for all the four. So, you have seen it, but you have left the aperture open. So, the four are completely sealed. That is the best scenario, but in case there are uh, challenges of seats or what have you, sometimes you can seal just the three. Okay? But under normal circumstances, you need to seal the four. Then after you have successfully sealed, it is after you have successfully sealed, you will record the serial numbers of the seats in the polling station diary. And if the agents, the agents have their own seals. Yeah, if the agents also have their own seals and they feel they want to do it, they can come. And they have to tell you early. But they have to inform you early that they, are, they also have their own seals so that you leave a small space for them also to come and put their seals. So they are also allowed to bring their seals. Is that clear? Now, the same procedure you can imagine repeats for the entire six. Remember, the agents will also be recording these things in their notebooks. Because, by the way, Wametoma, they also need to record. So it takes time. That's why, as a PO, you cannot wait for the agents arrive all to start. You have to start early and do it for the six of them. Now, having sealed them properly and having arranged them the way they are, the next thing that happens is that the presiding officer will now distribute the ballot papers, the ballot papers to various clerks and note again the serials of those ballot papers which has been issued. Having done all that, immediately it is 6 a.m. or 6.02, 6.03, 6.04. Opening is not cast that it must be at 6 a.m. It can even be at 6.05. It can be at 6.10. But what happens? You recover the lost time. The 10 minutes lost means you will close the station 10 minutes late in the evening to recover the lost time. Having done that, as I said, open it. And now, I've done a lot of theory and I want to start doing it now practically. Uh, voters can I just have some two, three, four persons? Wajipange tu apa. Two, three, tumeka sana. Hii ni raisi, tujitole. I want some three, four voters first. 
at least this is an opportunity for you to stretch yourself. <laughs> No problem. Mm. Okay. Now, yeah, th that is the agents present. They also have to record the de their details into the polling station diary. And that one immediate, as, the, as we admit them, even after opening the station, as we admit. Those who come late, they have to record the uh, details into the polling station diary. As I indicated earlier, agents can interject. So they were witnessing everything, even as I issue the ballot papers. Agents must know what, ballot, what are the serial numbers that I'm issuing. And what are the serial numbers of ballot papers that I have? It has to be as open as that. There's nothing secretly that IBC staff will do here. Then now I want to assume it is 6 a.m. Having opened it at the Kims, now whether there are voters outside or not, this one again is uh, it's like a, it's like a ritual it has to happen whether there are voters outside or not i'll come to the entrance of the polling station to declare the polling station open and how do we lie do it i'll just i'll say i maurice owino being the presiding officer for polling station ABC, do declare the, the, the polling station open at 6.03 a.m. And at that particular point, you will invite the first voter. Now, let's take for instance, by the way, that agents were not present. Again, this is another scenario which is important. Agents were not present as you started sealing the ballot boxes. Sindio, agents are not present, but there are voters present when you start sealing, okay? You can invite some of the voters to witness the emptiness and the sealing of the ballot box. In, in the absence of agents, but in the absence of both agents and none of the voters, clerks, are, will, clerks will be the witness to that. Now, I have declared the polling station open. I had given all my clerks the materials. They are ready to receive the first, the first uh, voter. What is, I hope my voters have got their identification documents. <laughs> so, we want to start, and there is the, I want to get some few scenarios, especially on the use of spoilt, on how to get the spoilt, and uh, please let us not put so many rejected. Rejection, maybe you can agree among us yourself, someone who will uh, have a rejection so that we also have something to count. <laughs> and uh, someone who will uh, spoil and someone who will have valid. And the stray one also, by the way. So as we move, by the way, 
I have the first one, two, three, four. Uh, I want the fifth person so that you agree on who will have valid, who will reject, spoiled, and another one person to join them, please. One, one volunteer. I'm a fika tayari. I'm a. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Join them, join them. Yes. Now agree on those two, three, four scenarios. Okay. Uko sawa. Yeah, you are getting all the six. <laughs> you have agreed. Okay, now the first person to come in. Okay, uh, just for purposes of this. Uh, okay, for purposes of this simulation, le let us agree on this. For purposes of this simulation, can let us we can we use this as an ID? Okay, yeah. Let us use our name tags as an ID, and uh, let someone also come without an ID. So as, the, as, as you can see, it is the role of the clerk in most cases to fold the ballot paper twice vertically. It is the role of the clerks to fold the ballot paper twice vertically to assist the voters in that issue. We usually do that for the issue of vertical folding to ensure that the stamp does not, that smudge or water view does, does not spill over to that uh, place for marking, which can be mistaken for a mark during election. During the, at the time of counting, please. The, the, the next, okay, this one again, you see by the, the, the other voter is already at the far end. It is at the discretion of the PO because the queue might be long. You cannot wait for one person to go through the entire process for you to get the next uh, voter in the queue. So immediately that person, even the booth, sometimes, but they like, especially in urban areas, you, you will find two or three booths there. As they continue receiving, you, it is simulation also come because I'm taking you through all the steps. As the voter comes in, if the voter is not, a reg is not registered in this station, but they, that one will be identified in the first machine. And will, it is upon clerk number one to communicate to the voter that you belong to this polling station, not this one. The machine you cannot allow any voter who is not registered in this station to cast 
their vote in this station. Yes, next. Yes. The voter doesn't have an ID. Oh, how do you? Na uko nayo? You don't have. So tunaomba uende ukuje na kitambulisho. But Sharia aikuruhusu you are not allowed to vote without an ID card. So just you just run back home and get your ID, then you come back. Then we'll give you the opportunity. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, next. Yes, an another set of uh, five, Tafadali, because I said we want 15. That's what will enable us to also demonstrate how counting is a tedious process and how it goes. But so far, another set of five, please, those who have not uh, participated. Another set of five. Okay, Hap, another set of five. Yes. Next. Oh. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, Paul, sir, you are a registered voter in polling station two, not here. So I request that uh, you move uh, to the queuing clerk to assist you not to queue, okay, in polling station two. Thank you. Pardon? <laughs> okay. Okay, and umwe umwe sikizana tayari, ndio? Yeah, the next person. Then I want someone also to be the candidate and see exactly what we do with the candidates. And you see candidates in most cases they come with their media with sometimes even assistant and water view. So someone on how we do it with the candidates. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, now again for for purposes of elections, by the way, a candidate is given priority when he comes to the station. He's given priority to vote first and continue with other duties. A candidate is also allowed to be his or her agent. And security ukingia utaacha inje. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Just come in <laughs> as, a, as a voter. <laughs> so those are some of the possible scenarios. And uh, so... Yeah, okay, I'll put you in the kid. I'll put you in the kid. Yeah. So... 
But by, by the way, candidates, the only thing is that the candidate cannot be together with the agent inside the room. If they have to decide, it is either the candidate representing himself or herself or an agent. Because we, only, we authorize only one agent, one candidate agent or one party agent at any particular time. So if the candidate decides to be uh, his or her own agent, then that appointed agent has to move out. Then he remains in. Now, as much as the queue, there is a queue, I will request those who are in the queue that Waruusu, Kwaheshima, to allow the candidate to come and cast his or her vote. So, Tafadalini, hey, <laughs> yeah. So, but say, PA Inje. But another thing, again, by the a candidate, sometimes they usually like being uh, photographed as they cast their vote. So the, his or her media can be allowed in to take a photo of that particular candidate as he or she cast the vote. No. They are only allowed at their, you see, as they come in, when a candidate comes with a spouse, they'll be given priority. Even with the PA, they are given priority. But they come in one by one, not as a group. The, the next person. Uh, uh, have I seen the scenario of spoiled? Have I really gotten the scenario of spoiled? Lena, Lena, have you gone? Have you come across spoiled? Twice. Yeah. No, not yet. Yeah, not yet. I want, I want us, please. I want one of you to give me that scenario of spoiled. Oh, you, you said easy. Okay. So. Now, again, this is a, this a situation of a voter I'm going to assist. And I'm going to assist as the PO. And how do I go, go about it? He has declared that he doesn't know how to read and write. So I'll invite agents to come witness. But how do we go about this? Let's take, for instance, you have 10 agents in the room. Do, do you really want the 10 agents to come and intimidate the voter? And how do we usually do it? What do we do? If there are more than three or four, they agree amongst themselves and say at any particular time, they'll be going, they'll, it, will, they'll be, it will be rotational, but three, three, three will be coming to witness. But it is not the PO to choose that you and you and you. If they agree amongst themselves on a rotational basis. Is that clear? So not all the time come to intimidate the voter. 
but those are things you do before opening the station. So I'll request, I'll request the agents to come. I'll request the two agents to come. Yes. Now, as a presiding officer, I must do the, I must do the help in presence of the agents. Now, yes. Bado, bada to answer. In a county representative. Sasa unachagua gani hapa? Lemaiba. Huyu unajua sura yake? Haya. Eh eh. Hii sasa ni a member of National Assembly. Alikuwa anaitwa nani? Katana yuko hapa. Oh, oh, Katana. Yeah. Ame confirm ame ameangalia sura vizuri. Yeah, ameangalia. It's in the hiyo. Okay. Yeah, senator. Yes, ndio huyu. And Ekina. Ekini. Hii ni ya governor. Tunataka mama kisi wakati hii mama. Naitua ene. Ene. Ngombe. Ene. Oh. Hii ni ya parliament. Mbunge. Kuna yuna naitua tumbo. Sikia kuna tumbo lakini ya naitua hii. Uyu. Tumbo. Uyu. 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 Tumbo. Aha. Hii ni ya president sasa. Hii ya kuru ni ya urais. Kuna mtu anaitua anaendesha baisikeli. Siku na hiyo mwanea na nasema mimi yake ni baisikeli. Aha, anaitua nani? Mimiya, mimiya, mimiya. Ok. Sasa tumemaliza. Utasaidiwa sasa na yule. Lena, saidia huyu. But then you can see how long it takes to assist a voter. No, agents now can just... Uh... <laughs> now you can see by the way how long, if you are in some areas, how long it takes to assist a voter. And even if you are yourself, how long it takes by the way to vote. Uh, do we have uh, another? Yes? Another person? Uh, so far, how many do we have? So that we... Oh, oh, then can I have another? I want 12. To a sub we. Hapa. This area. Some five persons, please, to Malaysia. Five people from, this, from the middle part. Okay, now, in my simulation, I'm assuming, by the way, uh, nine is not yet. Because sometimes, by the way, see, you have ever had announcements by around even noon when uh, the chairman says we have uh, like around 10% voter turnout, uh, we already have maybe a particular number of people who have already voted. How does the chairman, or how do the chairman know the number of people who have voted at that particular point, or the percentage? So, what do we do? <laughs> what do we usually do as a presiding officer when it gets to 9 a.m.? Then I send the first update of the number of people who have uh, the number of people who have turned up, and how do I get that? 
I get that from the Kim's machine. It will give me the number of people who have voted at, up, uh, until that particular time. At the same time, even ballot papers can show me the number of people who have voted up to that particular point, and then send the updates at 9, at 11, at 2, and then 3, then finally 5. So those updates is sent to the constituency returning officer who again sends the same to the national tallying center. Uh, in most cases, the next person can come as I explain this. Yes, yes, yes. The next, how can a PO or a presiding officer confirm that everything is okay? In most cases, he checks the number of people who have voted from the KMs and the number of ballot papers that have been issued. Those things need to tell because each and every voter must be given the six ballot papers. Must. There's, no, there's nothing like, I only want to vote for president, so I'm given only the ballot paper for president. I only want to vote for MNA, so I only need the ballot paper for MNA. No. All the six must be issued. So if you don't want to vote for those other positions, the only thing is that you will leave them unmarked. Yes. I want to confirm that he has voted for me. No, it's not allowed, sir. I'm not leaving here. No, it's not allowed, sir. <laughs> Voting is secret. You can call security. No, 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 no. That one no, is no, not no, allowed, no. sir. You, you, you <laughs> <first>. <laughs> one of one of you. One of you will I've have to. Voted. Then, please no, just no, give no. him space. No, no. No, no, he's not he allowed. He has to vote. Yeah, he's voting, yes, he's voting, but you are no you. But I have to confirm. You cannot confirm. He's not allowed. What happens? <laughs> then we, we won't allow. Se secrecy of the vote. Secrecy of no, the vote allows. The whole day. Secrecy of we the can vote wait for doesn't. So that you close. No, is that, excuse me, but sir. He's eaten my money. <laughs> <laughs> Mashimewa, <laughs> <laughs> with due respect, yes. secrecy of the vote allows him only. We do return the money because he doesn't have the money right now. It's an offense, also, by the way. In fact, you are watching Oshikwe Kwanza because in the first no, place no, you, you are dishing that. up you, security. You, you can't do that. It, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 um. <laughs> okay. Okay, those are some of the confusion, by the way. It's a good one, by the way. Those are some of the confusion that even the presiding officers goes through. It is never easy. And you, they come across all this <laughs> type of <laughs> voters. <laughs> so I think uh, we are done. So see, Burudini to just come back. All of you, so that we. So during the day, let's take for instance, it. it we. Did we have any spoiled? Okay, as much as we didn't have any spoiled, but as I explained, spoiled does not find its way into the ballot box. I repeat that. Updates, we do updates continuously, as I talked of, at 9 a.m., at 11, at 1, 3, and eventually at 5. <laughs> now, when it gets, it depends on the time I open the station. Like my station, for those who remember, I, I opened it at what time? 6.03, Cindy. So I can only close it at 5.03. And immediately it gets to 5.03 and there is a queue still. It is 5.03 and there is a queue. I'll go and put the security officer at the back of the last person at 5.03. 
and then declare, I, Maurice Owino Ligulu, being the presiding officer for Station A, do declare the polling closed at 5.03 p.m. Then allow only those who are in the queue to vote. Yes, you close and then allow them, because you cannot, you see, you have to close the station at 5.03. And now, by then, only serve those who are already, you are closing with them. Kama wakondani. And uh, having closed the station at 5.03, we want to change now from polling to tallying. Nimekuwa pio, nimefanya kazi nyingi, hata nasikia nimechoka sasa. And, uh, no, by the way, before I close, after closing, immediately after, immediately after the last person have voted after closing, you come back. And that one is very fast. You come back and now, you seal the aperture. You close and seal. All these things, by the way, they happen. Observers are there, agents are there, and agents, they come and sign the polling station diary that the seals that are here are the correct seals. They are also free to record. In fact, not that they are free, they are required, they are supposed, also in their notebooks, to record the serial number of the seals that we are using. So it is after this is done, nothing now can find its way into this booth. And now we want to get into the most tricky part. Happened if oh, this is the place where POs move all the way into the morning hours and even the following day as they still work counting. The way they are arranged, counting moves in that direction. Start with the presidential, move to the MNA, hivyo hivyo. That one is stipulated in the law and uh, the presiding officer cannot just decide on any. They have to start with the presidential as they come along. And uh, having sealed the aperture, having declared the station closed, it, it now changes into a counting hall. And now the presiding officer, with the assistance of the... By the way, the station is also closed in the machine. The, way, the same way we had two levels of closing in the mo of opening in the morning, we have two levels of closing in the evening. You close both in the machine and uh, verbally. Yes, just uh, you are reminding me of something. <laughs> no, you are free to remind me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I now want to invite. Lena, to take you through the next stage. Otherwise, thank you very much for participating in this, and we wish you a hope you have understood this. And after Lena have taken you through the counting process, we will... Uh... <laughs> no, clerks, clerks work, the agents, now observers, our ND. <laughs> okay. Wow. 
Let's appreciate him. Okay, good evening. Kumekua usiku. I wish we can stand up at least to refresh again. To ski a vizuri to we stretch stretch a bit so that we don't get lost in this process. I know the process is long. But I know you are not prepared psychologically, just like uh, the photos during that day. So stretch yourself a bit, a bit, a bit, then you sit down. It is time for counting. Remember, we don't exchange rows. What happens is that the, P, the uh, row, sorry, the PO and the DPO are in charge of the polling station. So they work concurrently because the one deputizes the other. The DRO, the DPO deputizes the PO. So now I was there, I was the DPO, now I'm the PO. So I'm going to carry you through the process of counting. And I want us to count only one ballot box. And the one we are starting with there, the presidential election bo ballot box, because it's the one that starts. And I, I, I hope that we have a stray, as we, because we wanted to see how we treat the stray bullet. I don't know, where is it? It's here. Okay, here there is none. Hmm? They are all white, huh? Okay, in, in, in fact, by law, we are supposed to start from the presidential election. And after we've tallied, we have uh, announced the results, we have uh, put them in the results uh, from 34, that's when we are supposed to, that's when we are supposed now to go to the next one. Sawa. So we, 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 we do everything, and then we also look at the ballot uh, papers that are remaining. We count them, the f counterfoils of the used ballot papers, everything, and then we put everything ballot, we put in the ballot box, then we seal, and then we, we announce, the, we do everything, the results, we announce the results, we give the, the engines, the copies, and everything, then we go to the next one. So we are going to start with the, we are going to, we said, we got, because we want to see the stray, and there are many here. Uh, let me, allow me to seal, because it was not really sealed. We wanted to use this one. It's good to see how they... We usually give 15 minutes for the engines, the clerks to refresh on. But usually, since morning, we usually tell the, the engines to, to be alternating. Like if someone, two of you have gone out or one has gone out, let the others remain. We don't want to be left in a situation that the, it is only IBC officials that are carrying out the election alone. Because we want you to, because we are the witnesses. So now we arrange the after we now people are fresh or refreshed, they are back now from the washrooms, they have stretched themselves. So now we want to arrange the room for counting. Kindly let, let us have our tables for counting here. So let's fit, fix this table and this one. And then the engines come and sit. You, come, you have to sit somewhere. Behind the clerks, PO is one side and the DPO the other side. So that PO and the DPO have enough security. You cannot sit together with the officials so that we are assured of the security. So we are going to show you, you are going to sit behind the clerks. So, <coughs> and so that you can see the count, you can oversee the counting process. And then the, st the strategic materials, secure them. Secure the strategic materials, the unused ballot papers, let us have them. The used counterfoils, we record them, and we also put them in the respective envelopes. The envelopes are here. Then we have the, the declaration forms, they have to be near, and they have to be kept very well near the security agent, the security officer. We have uh, 
Yeah, seal, we seal so that uh, there is none of the ballot papers that is going to slip in inside here and get hidden. Uh, you know, election is an emotive uh, process. One vote can make a difference, isn't it? Uh, then we also have to, you, to get the stamps for the respective purpose that is now there. They're rejected. They have to be near where we can get them easily. Rejected. We, okay, the, the stamps that we need here is the rejected. Because if we find one of the ballot papers that has not, does, does not have the features that are required, we reject. But, and I'm going to show you the, the ones that we are going to accept and the ones that we, we reject. Then we also have the stray because we are expecting we may get a stray, a stray ballot paper in this ballot box. Uh -huh. Then have the pens, let us have the, our pens ready and let us have our tally sheets. Let us have also the polling station diary with us because we are going to record everything that we are going to do here. So engines are here with us. Security. Make sure you remain at the door. Outside, the other one is on the door. To make sure that inside here we are, we are peaceful. Because you know the engines may, may misbehave in a way. When they see that they are, they are, their candidates are like not uh, getting what they expected, they start becoming unruly. So we light the lamp also. Whether it, 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 yeah, we usually light it at... Immediately after we close the polling station, we lit it. Even if, it is, even if at five there's enough light, but we lit it. Because you never know, some goons may misbehave and disconnect the what? Electricity. So the, lamp, the gas lamps should be ready. The calculator should be ready. And the rubber bands should be ready, and also the phones, that we should have our the phone that we are going to use for transmission of results. And remember, for, for transmission of results, we are only mandated to transmit for el the presidential election. The others, we don't have to. And that's why during the past by elections, we've not transmitted, because they were not for presidential. Hi. So, uh, engines, I want you to come. Uh, I want you to witness, check the, the, check the seals, confirm the seals. Those are the seals that we did in the morning, that were there in the morning, that we... Check the numbers? Yes, check the numbers from, from, your, from, yeah, yes, from where you recorded them. Confirm they are the same ones. And confirm that they are not broken. Are they okay? Yeah, they're okay. Okay, so, yes. Say it we, we So we are asking ourselves, because we wanted to see the tray. So which one should we do? Because we are supposed to transmit the presidential. Let us just assume. We assume this is presidential, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. the same thing I was explaining. Yeah? Yeah. So we are going to transmit. And remember, we, are, we only transmit for presidential election. Hi, Assessor, here, that's where we are. OK, so my clerk, you can, you can now cut the seals. Don't cut the aperture. But the envelope, have the envelope for the seals, for the broken seals. We, yeah, we use them in an, we put them in an envelope, and we also put them inside the ballot box once we finish everything. We don't carry, we, and there's nothing that we just throw away. Okay? Broken seals, okay. Right, the envelope, broken seals, okay. Okay, you can see engines. Yes. Okay, this this one remains because it, it does deserve it, it does serve its purpose. 
Okay? Now, this is the ballot. These are the ballot papers. Agents? Clear? Okay, clerks, assist me and forward these ones. To unfold. Okay, now we have, uh, let me see, we have candidates, we have uh, three, th we have three candidates. So Beatrice, you are going to take uh, for me the first candidate, which is Kengo Kangoi Latim. Kajola Lang, which is you are going to take for the first candidate. No, 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 I'm not giving you. I'm just saying you are going to take for the first candidate. And then uh, Le Parakuo, Le Meiba, Clark. Yes, yes. Clark, sit with. Sit at the Clark. Sit. Don't sit with, don't sit with agents. Okay, you are taking for Le Parakuo, Le Meiba. Okay, and then uh, yes, Gujiri, Elijah, you are taking for Nikisokoi Nanyokie. So we are going to confirm whether it is a valid or not. Now, before we confirm, before we confirm, and uh, from that three years, the tally sheet, you have the tally sheet. Now, before we confirm, First, we have to understand which one is a valid. I, would have, I should have explained before we, we started. But a valid fort is the one that is going to be marked either at the portrait or at the box or at the name of the candidate. If it is marked outside, it is a rejected fort. If it is not marked at all, it is a rejected fort. If, it, if, um, if the mark that is used can identify the voter, it is also rejected. Are we okay? If the mark that is used can identify, like for example, a name, we reject because we know, we, we, we know the, the, the name of that voter. Because you know we come from the same locality, isn't it? So we know the name of the voter. So if any, any, anything that is used to, to, to I mean, that can identify the photo, then we reject. Like a name, initials, like if it is L LNK, because people know I'm Lina, Nguta Kelons, so we reject. Sour. But we, we are going, going to accept other symbols, like a tick, we accept. Then uh, a cross, we accept. A dot, we accept. A dash, a slash. And then other mark that does not identify there the photo and remember where it's supposed to be in those three places and if somebody has marked for more than two candidates we also reject sour sour and if a ballot paper does not belong to that to, to that uh, election for example the, here we have the presidential election which is we are using the mca it is the mca so if if somebody has fought as 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 cast a vote for presidential that one is an astray fort, and we don't count it. We just stamp it astray, and we put it in the stray, astray envelope. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so those are the scenarios that we are expecting to find. And if a tick or a mark has crossed two or more candidates, we reject. We no longer talk of the intention of the photo because we don't know, the tick, we don't know where the person is starting. Maybe he's a lefty and he's starting from up. And then it came down to the next one. Is that okay? So if it is crossing over two or more candidates, then that, we don't count that. It is rejected. 
Yeah, and when we are counting, there should be no interruption. There is nobody who is supposed to get out or even come in. And uh, the engines should remain calm. You should not even, and you remember, in that order of secrecy, you are not supposed to announce anything, you are not supposed to say anything that is happening here until we declare the results. As for the people who have voted, or those ones maybe who have not voted, and for which candidate. Is that okay? Okay, I think now we can start. How many times can we recount? Okay, we can recount twice. As in you recount, when I finish counting, I can count again and again. Then that will be the last. So which means three times only. And the recount can only be done at the polling station. And then I'm expecting that you wait until we finish counting, telling, I mean, finishing counting, announcing results, so that you also sign for me the polling station diary. Because we are, we are with you, and we said in the morning we have to wait until, until we finish the process fully. Okay, let me hurry up because of time, because darkness is coming. So, if it is not stamped at the back, it's also rejected. But this one is just a disclaimer. Maybe in, we will be explained by our director after they finish the, the process of amending the, the electoral laws. So, this one is valid. You've not seen? It's valid. Or you want, you want me to, to, to show validity the and then also tell the person, say the person. And the color. And the color is this color. I've started, I've started with this one. So this one is valid because this is for the MCA. It was for the MCA bench. Is it okay? And then, okay. It has, it, we are awarding now to each. Yeah, we are awarding now to the people. I, yeah. This one is for Lion Ole Ngatuni. So we said Ole Ngatuni is being taken by Beatrice. It is not a stray. women rep. Okay, so this one, this one, yeah, is valid here. But when you look at the color, is it the same as the election? Let me stand here so that everyone can see. It's not. It's not conforming to the election. So this one should be what a stray. So take the stray. Stamp it and put it in the stray, in the stray envelope. This one is valid because it has a stamp. And then, from the way it is marked, it is marked for Nikiribai Ole Madole, and it is well marked. This is for, we said, number two. This one is stamped, you can see. It is no, this is stamping at the back. You, uh, first, I'm showing the stamp at the back. Then I show you now the mark. So it is stamped eh? at the back. Then it is marked for Gripai Ole Madole, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So number two. This one is stamped, yes. But what about the color? Are we in agreement? This is not the color of the ballot paper. So this is for another election. So this is a stray. Stamp it a stray. And put it in the envelope. This one is stamped. It is stamped. And it's the right color. So let us see. Yes, this one is stamped. This is uh, marked for Ele Ekini Nausia Nau. Number three, yeah? You can see it's correct. Higher. This one is right, stamped at the back. No, I don't have to show you because I'm assuming a muko. The, the people who are here is the engine. Because <laughs> we are outside at the windows. <laughs> so this is for Ekini Nawasa. Agreed? Okay, number three. This one is stamped also, and the same color with the ballot. Uh-huh. Okay, it is marked well. This is for Lion Ole. 
Yeah, number one. Are we okay? Yeah, number one. We are taking for number one. This one from the color. In as much as it is stamped, this is a stray, isn't it? This marked for it should be marked a stray and also put in the envelope for a stray. This one is stamped. You can see it's only that the stamp was faint. And it is marked for Ole Mandole number two. Are we okay? In agreement? Okay. Now we start counting from the first candidate. We don't start counting from the candidate we perceive to be getting more or from getting less. We start from the way they are arranged. So we start from these ones. So this is one, two results. Results from, uh, yeah, this is higher, easy. In an envelope, you bundle them and put them in an envelope. Number two, okay, we are counting. We are counting. Now, as we count, yes, as we count, we have the, the pali class and we have the pali sheet. So one, she, she says one, two, the plus here is also pali. And therefore, the palis must always uh, pali, yeah? it must be equal, it must be the same to the number of bundles. And then we also have a, a polling station there where we write. Eh? We also write, we, we write so that we are sure whatever he has written is what we are writing. And also the engines are also writing in their, in their notebooks for control purposes. So this is one, two, three. This is three for, for Mandole. We bundle them. And we put them in an envelope. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Candidate number three. We count. One. Two. So we bundle them. Do you record? We bundle them. Now we write the results. Declaration form 34. So... So now we are going to fill the form, the, the results declaration, because one, we, cannot, uh, we cannot announce results. And remember, for presidential election, we don't declare results. The person who declares results is the chairman, the, the national returning officer. Has we announce. We announce the results as they are. So after now, we, 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 we put them in the re results declaration form, that is form 34. We just read them as they are. And then we go... We troop, we go to the bombers or wherever the tallying center will be, we take the, our results there. So after we do that, we don't do, we don't do anything else. When we only read them, and then we take the results there once we are through with the other elective positions. So now we, we have the stray. Uh, um, um, okay, I don't know, okay. okay um, I'm expecting that maybe they will, be, they will be including it in the form. Because the stray, we only indicated the polling station diary. When you were counting for president, how many MNA stray did you find in presidential ballot? Yeah. How many count woman member did you find in the presidential ballot? Then you indicate just in the polling station diary. Yeah, so mine, I, I, I was asking because we don't know, maybe, maybe in this election it may be included in the, in the form. But no way. So um, I was just, yeah. So uh, I'm reading the results. Yeah. 
Ongeza zero mbebe. Okay. Silence please. Ah. Uh, Sign. Where is the PSD? They sign also. Sign. PSD. Yeah, they can refuse to sign. They can also refuse to sign, but then they also, they also indicate the reason why they have refused to sign. They refuse to sign. Okay. Then there is also the PO must append his signature or a signature, sign, date, and stamp. Then the PO should also do the same. And when you, when you, you heard about illegality and the rest, so it's, when there is no, and it's not stamped, then it raises questions because you don't know, you, you don't know where it's coming from. So to run the process, you write your name in full, you write your ID number, you write the date and stamp. So uh, I'm about to read the results as they appear in the polling station code 005 uh, KSG. The name of the polling station is KSG, code 005, ward. Iskabete, code 006, constituency, Kabete constituency, code 037, county, Kiambu county, code 022, number of votes cast in favor of which candidate? Name of candidate, Ekirapa, okay. Yeah, Lion Ole Ngatuni 002, Lion Nakirapa Ole Mandole 003, Ekini Nausia 002. Total number of valid votes casts, six. Valid for number of valid votes casts, they are the valid the the the, the force that are we apportion to each candidate. The valid force that the ones that we have counted, without including the rejected votes, because rejected votes are not valid votes. Usually, there is a lot of issues in relation to rejected and the valid votes. Is that okay? So rejected votes are not counted because they already they are rejected. So valid votes are those ones that have been apportioned to each candidate or the, one, the ones that have been garnered by each candidate. Uh -huh. Total number of valid votes cast, 006. Polling station counts. Total number of registered voters in the polling station, 050. Total number of rejected ballot papers, 00. Total number of rejection objected to ballot papers, 00. Total number of disputed votes, 00. Total number of valid votes cast, 006. Serial number of ballot papers within dispute fort. Name of candidate assigned to the fort. Those ones we didn't have for, the, for our election today. Declaration. So we, they are assigned being present when the results of the count were announced, do hereby declare that the results shown above are true and accurate count of the ballots in uh, KSG polling station 005, constituency Kabete, presiding officer, Lina Ngute Kilonzi, my signature and the date. The Deputy Presiding Officer, Mollis Ligulu Owino, signature and the date. Then overleaf, there is the, the engines or the candidates, if present. The name of candidate or engine, XX, ID, party name, to, contact, and the signature and the date. The next one and the third one. If one of the engines has refused to sign, there is also reasons for refusal to sign. Reasons for refusal to sign. So they may, not, they may have left before, before the process is over. So you may write, write there as the PO. 
Uh, then there's also the presiding officer's comments. And we usually say presiding officer's comments should be in relation to the counting process. So you can say there were no disputed ballot papers. But here we can say there were two stray ballot papers. In our election here, we'll have some comments here because we say there were two stray ballot papers for which election? For the woman rep and for the, for the senator. Yes. And then uh, we finish. So we, with our results now, we put them in the envelope. Then the other, the unused and the, and, and, uh, and the counterfeits of used ballot papers, we put them somewhere, we count them, we reconciled, and then we also uh, indicated in our PSD. So we give agents copies, and nowadays they have become digital. So mostly they want to just uh, take, yeah, take. But uh, taking does not mean that I, I cannot give you. We, we usually encourage you get a copy. And then we also do the copy that we make. We also, the first copy, that is the copy that we are taking to the, to the, to the, return, the, to the, to the national returning officer. Then we, the second copy is pasted here. The, third, the second copy, the third copy is put here. And the, one, the, other, the fourth one is... Is, is, is pasted at, on the, at the door there. So that if somebody comes and he wants to know the results, they will be able to read the results from here. And then in the future, this, in, before we open the ballot box in case there is a dispute, you will be able to see what is pasted in, in, this, in this ballot box. Then there is another one that in, in there is in an, in an envelope, tamper proof envelope, inserted in the ballot box. Then we seal everything ballot, we seal it here. When I say everything ballot, I am saying that the, all the ballot papers used and used counterfoils, we put them here. But we take all the results. The first copy of the results we take to the county returning officer. We see the first one to the national returning officer, to the county returning officer. And then the other ones, we treat them as we've said, and then we give to the copies to the engines. Then we have also the register. Yeah, then you, you transmit now the results. Then the, the, the register we take to the, to, to the returning officer, plus the KMS kit. I, I, it, is, it is never inserted in the, in the ballot box. And then we also form that three. The tally sheet is, 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 is used to, to wrap the results and put in the, inside the ballot box. Then that's from, from that two declaration, that one is taken to the returning officer. And the re re remaining of the form 32s and the other non strategic materials are um, put together and carried by the deputy presiding officer to the logistics officer or the constituency warehouse. So now we are supposed to transmit the results. So we come out to may transmit. We, we, we may use the KMs, may use the uh, depending on what will uh, be accepted, will, what will be advised. We can use the EV, there is a time we use the EV, we can use our phones, we can use also the, the KMS kit to transmit the results. And I think uh, I'm through, unless there's something I've forgotten. <laughs> Thank you so much, my engines and my... No. Kabisa. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Is the polling station diary serialized? No. Uh, and so if it's not, how can you be sure it is the same? Should there be a dispute like when people are going through it again? Okay. The, the polling station diary is not serialized. But as you have seen, the first day, even the, the start, it starts yesterday, all the poll officials append their signatures their contracts, their hindies, and everything. And the, 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 the day we start polling, the first thing, the engines also, they put their names, their IDs, their contacts, and they sign. So in case of anything, they are, they are free to call. So in, in uh, worst scenarios, we usually find that uh, the PO has locked all the, all the results there. They, they have to call the engines to come and agree. And then they come, maybe, they, they agree to open. So how do they call them? Because they have everything. They have their contacts. They have everything. And they need everything together. So 
they, they, it's just a way of, uh, they open in the, in the eyes of everyone, they, well, they retrieve the results and the results are read, then they, they seal again. And they, they write at the P, uh, in the PSD. I saw the returning officer also writes his comments or her comments about that. But we, we still, we, you know, this one is in relation to what we've been doing, so we are yet waiting for the clarification of what exactly we are supposed to do come uh, 9th August this year. Yeah, but for the, for the, if you interact with the polling station there, you'll find that it has a lot of information that is there. The, the, even the, the, the engines that came later, they also write. Because there are engines who witness the opening of the polling station, they, are, they have a different slot. Then there's a place where all the engines put their names and append their signatures and their contacts. There are also, those who also witness the, the ceiling of the aperture, they also write there. There are those ones who also witness the, 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 the unsealing of the ballot box by, by the time we are counting. They also append their signatures. You see? So, and even the, the results, after we give you the results, so they also sign. So every step they sign, every step they sign. So when you look at the process, you can see it is really tedious. It takes a lot of time. And you see the PO and the DPO, they are also supposed to see that uh, the, 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 the photo here does not maybe uh, go with one of the ballot papers because it's, it's, also, it's, it's also illegal to go with the ballot paper. It's a criminal offense. So once you get that pass, that, uh, that uh, photo, you are supposed to take action. You, are also, you also don't want to have many spoiled or many rejected ballot papers, so sometimes you also have to confirm that whatever they are doing is right. They can also insert foreign things in the ballot, in the ballot box, which is also a criminal offense. So you have to be on the watch out. So the PO and the DPO that day, they never rest. And when it comes to counting, we don't count just like we've done, because you see that these are six elective positions. And imagine one elective position and 700. The other one, 700, or, or they are about. So they love to count one finish. They do everything as we've done, and even more, because now we are not doing exactly what we do. And then they also repeat the same to uh, the other elective positions. So they ask us, what have you been doing? And these are very few. You know, this is not mathematics. So it has to go step by step in relation to, uh, to the IBC Act and also the electoral laws. Thank you. OK. Yes, thank you so much. Eh? We, it, as this session commenced, we were actually made aware or informed that uh, one of the functions of IBC is to do continuous voter registration. Now, my question is, how practical is that? Because time and again, we have had the announcement from the chair, IEPC, opening registration of voters and a closing at a space on a specified date. Is it really practical that this continuous? My understanding could be that uh, continuous means it, there is no time limit. It is ongoing throughout the, that electoral cycle that we talked about. Kindly clarify, like recently they opened, closed. Open, closing. Is that really continuous? Maybe before the mic goes, I had an observation I was making. I handled an election offense, and the lady who was being accused kept on saying that um, she was so tired, she didn't know what she was writing. I, I don't know, maybe one of the measures that you might be putting in place, because it appears that the exercise is so tedious. And then, um, Election offenses or elections do not have a margin of error because any small, slightest error will always cause a problem. So maybe, I don't know, it's an observation that I had to make that you might need to even uh, train them more to understand those ones who are going to be DPOs and POs because that is where the problem is. Okay, okay let, let's do this, eh? 
let me request you to first, we allow him to send the results, then we continue. If you feel like you can forget, kindly write it somewhere so that he can finish transmission, then we continue. Is that okay? He, let him transmit the results. Then after he's finished, then we, just a few minutes, just two minutes or one minute, he'll be done. Yes, I wanted to consider them as transmitted, but there are issues that might come up uh, around results transmission that need to be clear. One, we've always talked about the server. And um, we felt like if we leave this place without explaining anything around the server, then we'll be having a gray area. So we can assume that they have been transmitted, but we need to talk about something in very simple terms. I don't want to go to the technical jargons. Now, um, there are different types of servers, but you can call one a web server. A web server, in very simple terms, um, tunakumbuka ile nini aposta kitambo, sanduku la posta, PO box, where you walk physically to the post office, uko unapewa kifunguo 003, uneno nafungua post office box yako, unachukua barua. So, let us go to the email. Now, the email automates that one. Your kifunguo is your username and your password. So you log in and you get your email in a box. That is what we call a mail box. So, peer kwa easy results. PO atapigia picha kitumia Kim's kit. Then they transmit it. It is stored in a virtual storehouse. Same as your email that you receive. Then from there, the arrow can access and download a form from the polling station. Secondly, the other person who is able to access this is the public. Now, we have a website or what we call um, a public portal that is uh, forms.ibc Forms, it's something that you can access, forms.ibc.or.ke. You'll find the results there. Iyo ndi osava. Usitake kuona ingine. Kuna forms.ibc.or.ke. I can come to this particular uh, public portal as results are going on, as polling is going on. If Pio Ametuma... I can actually come to this virtual storehouse and pick like Bomet, and I choose a constituency like Sotik. I choose a ward. Easy, imagine an ingumu. Longer than what? Then I choose a polling uh, center. Then I choose a station. Primary. Then I view. Uh, you'll see the form, which was sent by by the PO in that particular site. So wakati unambo fungue server, ata tukifungua, they'll just see exactly what is on that particular website. So what you've done, it's a central storehouse, hizo picha zote, and we provide a link to that particular storehouse. So wakuna mali ati esabu ingine nenda kupigiwa. Ni vile tu, ata kipigia picha mbuzi na atume. That is what is going to be to be there. <laughs> Nasema, <laughs> ile picha atapiga ya form, ata kipiga desk empty, we cannot edit it. Ile akipiga kiti, ukienda for that station, that is what you will get. So when we are opening the server, maybe people are disappointed, they didn't see what they wanted to see, but this is what you will find. That's why I gave the example of an email, uh, of a mailbox, yako ya PO box. Ile barua ni metumo kifungo ile sanduku ndi uta, uta pata. That package. Whether it's what you expected or you expected something different, you just get whatever was sent. So, sorry? Yes. Yes. Now, um, now, about the logs. 
Yes. It's, it's a log still. I can go to the various categories of logs. That's why I want to run away from the technical jargons. Yes. 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 Now, that's what I wanted to explain in this way. <laughs> now, the gadgets that we have are locked to a particular polling station and no other person can send the results of that specific polling station. Now, another disappointment in terms of uh, opening the server, it can only be accessed by specific devices. So, ukituma na simu yako itakuja. Secondly, about logs. You know, logs cannot be seen here. Even your WhatsApp has logs. If you go to the back end, what we call the back end, is when you'll be able to see the, the logs, when you're doing an audit. Because logs are complicated. Tumekuja nazo kotini. Siju ni wangapi wame participate kwa kufungua logs. Anyone who has sat in that process. <laughs> I'm just saying how many people have participated when you give the logs, uh, the politicians, the political class came with their experts. Tukafungo is logs. Interpreting the logs is a whole different scenario altogether because you need to understand what you need to see. They are not in very plain language to everyone to understand. We need ICT experts and there is a whole course on audit. Of systems. So not every ICT expert will sit down and be able to interpret the logs for you. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Transaction logs. No. There is statement. Don't confuse logs and statements. <laughs> the ICT from the bank. Thank you for that statement. You are told by the ICT from the bank. That's what I'm saying. The logs, again, I insist, will be translated by an ICT person on who did what transaction, when, even us, we have that. But you not be able to see it from this portal. Yes, you not be able to see this from this portal. But the logs are there. That's why I'm saying we've been in court, now we let logs up, and people are not able to interpret the logs. So when we are having this particular process, have experts who are able to interpret the logs for us, for the court and even for the various, various uh, litigants of this process. So this portal is open, forms.ibc.or.ke. You will see the forms for all by-elections. You will see the forms for the 26th of, um, uh, 26th of August uh, election 2017. You can be able to browse through the forms, including the forms from the various form Bs and form As. So we have form 34A, Form 34B and Form 34C. So this is a form that you can download and peruse through and be able to see what is there. For the by-elections, the same, the ones that have happened presently, you're able to see all that. So E, the presiding officer nakuja analinganisha na ile, PO anatoka nao kwa field. So it's just a control to see. Isi badilikia kwa njia, what is transmitted, the, the arrow also downloads. So with that, I will welcome our director. Thank you very much. Makofi Kwao. <laughs> Colleagues, uh, our encounter with uh, the judiciary uh, usually is uh, the training runs from around midday 
to 6 p.m. We started this at about 2.30. It is 6. I know we are fatigued. We are tired. Yet there are questions that I need to answer. There, there is a question on continuous registration of voters. Uh, I also wish to interact with you on other aspects of electoral law, like transmission of results. I probably uh, have occasion to take you through the Election Laws Amendment Bill 2022 and some of the changes in our regulations that we are proposing. But today is not the time. I have spoken to Madam and uh, the MC, and we have agreed that if I find time in the course of the week, I will come. Probably on Wednesday, I can have an hour or so, so that we can engage. Registration goes on throughout, that is the law. Registration takes place in our constituency offices, but after elections, there's a period within which election petitions, and they are numerous, are uh, hard and determined. So we suspend registration because the law allows the commission to suspend registration when it considers it inappropriate to continue with the registration. But after election petitions, we, that's when you, you, you witnessed in McQueen, we launched the voter registration exercise. But what you witnessed a few months ago, that was just uh, a cliche, enhanced voter registration, or what otherwise we call mass voter registration when we have resources. But the law does not recognize enhanced voter registration or mass voter registration. Those are just proactive uh, moves that the commission makes in order to reach the voter. Are you, are you answered, brother? Thank you so much. Uh, we will have another occasion in the course of the week. Uh, from IBC, we are grateful for this opportunity to uh, discuss and appraise the electoral law uh, regime from an operations perspective. Madam, a question? Yes, please. Yes.
Okay, I'm informed the bus is, is about to leave. But I agree with you. We will uh, we will serialize or or we stay the IBC style up to ten PM. Yes. Serialization, yes, that suggestion is welcome uh, for accountability purposes. Uh, the second question, you said you are satisfied? We usually have excess uh, ballot papers to cut off for uh, those that may be spoiled, but there is an accounting uh, uh, procedure. Uh, each ballot paper must be accounted for. Yes? Zero point one point one five percent, yeah, over and above, yes, of seven hundred. Of registered voters in that particular area. Yeah, which cannot exceed uh, in a polling station seven hundred. Yeah. Rejection. Uh, you see, that is the presiding officer is the one in charge of uh, elections at the polling station, isn't it? And the law gives the presiding officer power to determine whether a ballot is rejected or not. Remember, he's an IBC official. He's trained and he's taken through the legal framework. And there are parameters of determining whether a ballot uh, paper, yeah, whether a ballot paper uh, stands rejected or not. There are four parameters. So I'll give Morris. Uh, yeah, just uh, your concern very fast. All, when she explained, she said, oh, everything ballot goes back to the transparent uh, ballot box. So all those rejections, all those rejected, will be taken and sealed together, which means if there is any petition, everything rejected, stray, is found there. But there is also the statement on rejected ballot papers. There is also the statement on spoiled yes Okay, no, 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 okay, now that one is even something that the director is working on and he can uh, talk about it because I think they are removing that issue of uh, stamping at the back. Yeah, from our training uh, of judicial officers, uh, particularly Justice Kiage observed that with the numerous security features that the ballot paper has, it is not necessary anymore to have the stamps. So we are working on that. It's a valid concern. Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, it's been a long afternoon. Uh, we hope that we'll have another opportune moment to interact. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate uh, the director and his team for the good work he has done. We appreciate that demonstration. It was very important to us. Because as prosecutors, you are able to identify the possible offenses. We are also able to identify the exhibits that we want and the possible witnesses. So today we have been able to understand the, what happens on the election day. And uh, we are better prepared. Even as we look at our acts, our, our charge sheet, and, and, and the checklist we have developed, we are better prepared. We want to say thank you so much. Uh, director and your team for taking time to take us through. I know we have uh, burning questions, but what we propose is that uh, we are going to have another session. So we can lay down our, our questions and we'll invite uh, Director again to come and uh, continue from where he has stopped. So thank you so much for being attentive. I kept reminding the Director that the bus will leave us. <laughs> Not all of us are spending here. Some of us have to go back to our homes. So I want to thank each one of you for your attentive. Thank you for our presenters for being so patient with us. May God bless you all. I have one announcement. For those who are presenting tomorrow, kindly give your presentations to Loda or Muchina so that they can uh, prepare for presentation early enough. 
With those few remarks, I wish to call Mr. Hassan to come and wind up for us and give us the directions for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Grace. Uh, colleagues, uh, may I take this opportunity to thank uh, presenters for uh, a very well organized uh, session. Now for tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, let's try to be early. As you have seen now, uh, if we continue the way we, we have done today, uh, we might be leaving here well after 7 p.m. Um, we are not complaining. Uh, we have, uh, I think, learned quite a lot, especially those of us who have maybe never voted uh, <laughs> before. Uh, now we know what to expect. Uh, there's still some time, please, for those of us who are not even registered, because prosecutors are very busy people. They may not have time for <laughs> this kind of thing. So there's still time, please. Go and register. Now you know how it goes. Uh, so thank you so much for your patience, your questions, your engagements. Uh, we are looking forward to more of this tomorrow. So uh, may you have a lovely evening. For those of us who are fasting, may you have a good uh, breaking of fast. Otherwise, thank you so much. Um, see you tomorrow morning. Ali, please.